So apparently if you click on this guy's Instagram story, your phone stops working. But that's obviously not true. Oh. Oh, sh This has been the reaction of tens of thousands of people over the last week after their smartphone crashed because of an Instagram story. And the internet is going crazy about it. There are articles, news stories, people have made guides on how to get around it, and Twitter is full of people who have either just fallen victim to it, people who don't believe it and are about to fall victim to it, or people planning out long-term strategies to get victims to fall for it. But some friends and I decided to make this our life's mission, and we figured out what, who, how, and why, and we've kind of managed to recreate it. Here is the top level summary. There is an account called PG Talal. He has two main Instagram stories on his page, and if you click them, you will have a wildly different experience depending on what kind of device you're on. On Android phones, you'll see a plain purple screen with confetti, and you'll hear this song called Your Love, which at this stage is now permanently burned into my brain. And also you'll notice that weirdly, unlike other Instagram stories, for some reason on these, you can't pause them by holding your finger down on them. It's almost like this person is taking control over your phone. But then, if you click the same Instagram story on an iPhone... Oh dear. You'll see a grey screen with what looks like Arabic text, and your phone will become completely unresponsive. I had so many questions. Like, how can an Instagram story have this much power? Why does it look like two different things depending on what phone you're using? And what is he trying to do here? This doesn't feel like just harmless fun. Is he hacking people? Is he stealing people's details? Is he trying to take down Instagram? We had to find out. Now, you might remember the video I made about that wallpaper that crashed people's phones if they applied it. And in that video, I came to the conclusion that it was an accident. Someone had taken a photo and accidentally edited it in a way that causes phones to die. But is it just me or does this one feel like it's on purpose? I mean, look at his profile. This Talal guy isn't trying to hide these stories. If anything, he's proudly inviting people to click them. He's posted updates about how many views the stories have gotten, like it's some sort of trophy. He's created new crashes since those two original ones, which I'll get to. Plus, if anyone can pull something like this off, it's a full stack developer, which this guy's claiming to be. AKA someone who can build both the front end and the back end of a piece of software. AKA someone who knows what they're doing. I'm not criticizing, I mean, he's created this thing, people are fascinated by it, it makes total sense for him to try and grow from it. He's actually become one of the fastest growing new accounts on Instagram, with his one and only main feed post hitting 2 million views before he deleted it. But the point is, this crash ain't no accident. So, to try and figure out what on earth was going on here, I had to look at all the information available. There was not a lot. Talal has no profile picture. Most of the text is in Arabic. The one post he did have was a weird compilation of Monica from Friends, also with an Arabic caption. And the only personal things I could find about him were his personal account, which is private, and his TikTok account, which is literally just him focusing back and forth on the letter N. Like I said, not a lot to work with. But I thought, okay, the one thing that I can do right off the bat is to use Google Lens to translate all of this Arabic text. Turns out the caption on his post just redirects people to his personal account, and the captions on the stories that are crashing phones just translate to nice thing I passed and bittersweet thing, which wasn't quite as enlightening as I'd hoped. But then I had an idea. I thought the next best thing, if I can't find any data, was to create the data. So with a heavy heart, I took out one phone after the next, installed Instagram on them, visited these stories, and monitored in both horror and fascination what was happening to each. It felt like sending my babies off to torture. But I did learn something interesting. The general consensus online has been, if you have an iPhone, steer clear. But if you have an Android, you're good. That's not true. Because yes, if I view this story on a super modern Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra with 16 gigs of RAM and the latest version of Android, it is fine. If I try to view it on... That doesn't have Instagram stories. I get that. But if I try viewing it on a mid-range Nokia phone from a few years ago, it's definitely struggling with something. Not the only thing Nokia's been struggling with recently. And if I then just try it on a really cheap old Android phone, it will crash. And it will crash badly. When I tried it, it wouldn't even open the Instagram story. And from the moment I clicked it, the phone couldn't do anything. None of the buttons worked, the screen didn't work. I got a pop-up saying the whole system is unresponsive, but I couldn't act on it. Cause the system was unresponsive. This video, I swear, has been borderline traumatic to make, but if you are enjoying it, then a sub to the channel would be therapeutic. So we've got three groups of Android phones here. The most powerful ones are fine. The middle ones struggle, but make it through eventually. And the weak ones, die. So at this point I thought, 
Oh, of course. The reason phones are crashing is that he's done something to this story that means it requires a lot of processing power or RAM to run. I never want to hear this song again. Stop! And that would also kind of explain why pretty much all iPhones were crashing, because even the highest end iPhones right now are capped at six gigabytes of RAM. I knew I was on the right track, but I wasn't quite there yet. So I did what any brave soldier would do. Yeah, I asked other people. I basically assembled the tech Avengers. I reached out to iOS developers, XDA developers, Java and Flutter developers, Android experts like Gary explains, and my number one go-to on this was Anane, who's a cybersecurity researcher at Arizona State University. And we have some answers. Okay, so the best way to understand why an Instagram story is causing phones to crash is to understand what is in that Instagram story. And as it turns out, it's a bit more than just those Arabic characters you can see. So what Anane was showing me is that if you go onto Instagram via the web and you delve into the inspect tab, you can see all of the raw data behind every post and every story on any profile. I feel like that's a full video there, just on the amount of data being collected. But the surprising thing for the purposes of this video is what we found when we inspected PG Talal's Instagram stories. So you might know that Instagram has these stickers that you can add, like a poll or a question or a countdown. They're like little widgets that anyone looking at these stories can interact with. And on their own, this isn't going to be putting any major strain on your device. But using Inspect, we can see that what PG Talal has done is created two of these elements at the same time. One of them is a countdown that was built to end on 23rd of October 2020. And one of them is a quiz, which just has the question R and three possible answers as D, D, and C. The contents of these elements isn't what's important. I'm pretty sure he just typed in random letters because he knew that you weren't going to see them anyways. And the reason for that is that he has managed to make them enormous. So for context, if I inspect a normal Instagram story, I'll find that the X and Y scale values for the size of each sticker element will be somewhere between zero and one. And it roughly means what proportion of the screen will that thing be taking up? For PG Talal stories though, the scale of these elements has 18 digits. So we're not talking about stickers big enough to fill up a single phone's display, not even hundreds, not even thousands of phones. We're talking stickers so big that they can span quadrillions and possibly quintillions of phones. Or in other words, he has made this quiz and this countdown timer so large that if we were to actually zoom out and see the whole image, it would be many, many times the size of the Earth. Do you want to know why the image looks purple on Android? Well, that's because what you're actually seeing is just part of the countdown timer. It's stretched out to enormous proportions, so you're literally looking at a tiny, tiny part of this section here. And the confetti is just what Instagram shows when a countdown has ended. And this also explains why you can't pause it, because I'm not really clicking on the story here, I'm just clicking on a non-interactive part of the countdown timer. But how? Because if I just open Instagram, I can't just keep expanding these elements indefinitely. Instagram's thought about this. Well, PG Talal has used something called an HTTP proxy, which is a type of software that allows him to see, but more importantly, modify the data that's coming out of his phone before it hits the Instagram servers. Think of it like a, like a middleman. Talal makes a quick Instagram story with a normal looking quiz and countdown timer on his phone. But then instead of sending that story directly to Instagram and it going public, he has intercepted it using this proxy, where he has then changed those size and the location values too of these elements to something astronomical. And so what we think is happening here is that because Instagram isn't built with this scale of numbers in mind, it isn't dealing with them properly. Instagram should have realized that these numbers are stupidly large and filtered them out. They should have had some sort of rule that says if size is greater than one, then make it just one. But actually they've gone and sent these garbage values straight to your smartphone. And so whether or not your device crashes from this story depends on how well it is able to deal with these numbers. As an overall piece of software, Android is. That's why you can still see some part of this countdown timer. So because there isn't an error, it's not like all Android phones are just gonna start crashing immediately. But it is just still generally strenuous to try and render out something this massive. Hence why older, less powerful Android phones still struggle. But iOS as a whole just isn't ready to receive numbers of this magnitude. It doesn't know how to display these objects. And that's why every iPhone, regardless of how powerful they are, crashes. This is why you don't see any purple, you don't see any confetti, and instead you just see the original gray video with the Arabic caption. That on Android phones is still there, but it's sitting behind this purple countdown timer. 
So the crash is somewhat to do with power and RAM like I initially assumed, but it's also to do with software, and it's mostly Instagram's fault. But why? Why did Talal do this? Well, my best guess is that it's A, for a bit of fun, a bit of a challenge, but also B, to flag a problem. Facebook, who owns Instagram, they have a whole list of coders who they've actually paid money to because they've managed to find vulnerabilities and then reported them. I don't think this person is trying to break anyone's phone because, well, first of all, every phone of mine that's crashed because of it, I have managed to recover. And secondly, plot twist, yesterday the guy himself actually replied to me from his personal account. And apparently he's only 14 years old. He is a self-taught developer who started at the age of 11 and I just think it's hilarious that he's managed to get through all of Instagram security. And I also think he might have just hacked the Instagram chat because I swear you are welcome is not a react option. Whew. Okay, with all that out of the way, there was one thing left to do. We now know that it is possible to crash someone's phone through an Instagram story. We think we know how it's done. Can we recreate it? Yes. And no, we did manage to use an HTTP proxy to intercept the story. We did manage to scale up these stickers to ridiculous dimensions, just like Talal did. Like here, you can see that we have made a story that just like his looks purple on Android, but you can't see that purple on iOS because the iPhone can't render the countdown. But it does look like Instagram has fixed the crashing itself because both phones survive. Talal's stories will still crash your phone, but it doesn't look like you can make a new one now that does the same thing. However, there will always be another exploit. This Talal guy just a couple of days ago posted a new story that used a completely different trick, a sequence of characters that your phone just doesn't understand, to crash Instagram. This one isn't as serious, it doesn't crash the whole phone, but it's still kind of crazy to see you literally cannot open the story because the second you try, boom, the app closes. And this crash, Anane and I were able to recreate. Anane built a story literally 20 minutes later using the same technique, and sure enough, Instagram quits. The takeaway of all of this is that no software is ever going to be completely watertight because there's always going to be an exception that the company didn't plan for. And it leads to some fascinating questions. Like what if someone created a bug and then paid for adverts so that that bug was shared on every single person's device? Could they hold Instagram to ransom? Anyways, do consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Thanks again to Anane for his help on this. And if you do want to see my last video about crazy inventions, that's up here. And if you want to see the wallpaper that could kill people's phones, that's over here. My name is Aaron. This is Mr. Who's the Boss. I'll catch you in the next one.